We won't be starting it on Welshman's Bridge today, Welsh Bridge. We will be taking the Frankwell footbridge over to Frankwell. Of course, opened in 1979. So welcome back to third rate content. Today we're in Frankwell, the town within the town, as I said, and uh, we're gonna have a walk around it, Frankwell, Mountfields, have a, and uh, learn a bit of its history, hopefully. I've done a little bit of third rate research. And uh, we've also got a guest on the show today, Dean, my good friend, nice and a very you. interesting guy. So buckle up and we'll see you out here. Yeah, so this building was originally built to be Shrewsbury um, town council offices about 22 years ago I'd say 21 years ago and of course it now houses Shrewsbury Centre University which is a sort of offshoot of the University of Chester and also marches at growth hub and sort of business support yeah so today we are starting right about here and we're going to be covering all of this area, Frankwell and Mainfields. Yes, yeah, so we're just walking up the, the Frankwell flood defences. Just from, from the bridge, of course, just showed you the sign when they were erected. They seem to have done the trick for this part of Shrewsbury since. But of course, the water has to go somewhere. So you've got Frankwell Boatyard here, it's a very small boatyard, but it's like a reminder of the riverside trade of Frankwell, which kind of made it and brought it up really. The building in the foreground is known as the Stew, with the Theatre 7 in, looming in the background. Dates from the 1700s. Yeah, so what did you say, what do you remember it being, Dean? Yeah, it was Indian restaurant down here. I took many a young girl on a date to that uh, Indian restaurant, I But, um, and I also remember when I was a child coming here as, as an antique centre. Dean just remembered that David Dickinson yeah, came, yeah. came to this very antique centre at the, at the Stew here. Obviously a, a much newer building here, still in use I think, Shrewsbury Marine Services, yeah but it was a well-known antique centre, a good way to spend an afternoon yeah. probably, you know, just milling about and having a browse. Yeah, and there was plans to dis to uh, demolish this in the last 10 years. Really sort of harebrained plans, a bit dumb really, taking away Shrewsbury's history to put some more very mediocre architecture up, I imagine. At Bill's Cafe, there is a Bill's Cafe still in Shrewsbury, I don't know if it was the origin. If this is the originator of the one that's still going. So yeah, it does look a lot like a Maltings. Yeah, well, I think part of the building was used as a Maltings in the 1700s at some point. So another part of Shrewsbury's brewing history. Yeah, it doesn't look very good for Shrewsbury. We look like we're uh, alcoholics. <laughs> Of course, Frankwell had about 18 pubs in the 1700s and it made a lot more sense to brew the ale locally rather than ship it across the country like is the practice today. Yeah, so this whole area that we're looking at, which has included all this really old building as well, was known as the Stew. It wasn't just this it wasn't just this, it was the whole area that it dated back to the 1400s and was hotly contested. <laughs> during the uh, War with the Roses, when uh, the, pla the descendants of the Plantagenet line um, fought out for the control of England. The descendants of Edward III, the last Plantagenet king. Yeah, so Frankwell has had a significant amount of development in the last 20 years, as these buildings attest to. But then you've got the older workers' cottages. Just peeking out over the cars is Shropshire County Cricket Club. So it says on Wikipedia. Didn't you hear something like that? Yeah, they closed it in summer for a couple of weeks because there was a family of adders right. right in there. <laughs> England's only poisonous snake. Wow. 
yeah, just a really nice sort of aspect there on the new theatre, the back of it, being integrated with the old uh, Methodist chapel. You've got the Anchor pub, that actual building dates back to the late 1600s and there's been a pub there since the 1700s. Yeah, this whole area behind me was Frankwell Quay um, and it did actually stretch down here. There are pictures online where you can see uh, the row of houses sort of sticking out at right angles behind me. But it's nice to see there's still elements of the old Frank work. Yeah, Frankwell has always been and continues to be a place with a lot of places to drink and eat. Dean's just spotted a really third third rate content place to eat. Third place, it's a curry house. I have actually eaten there a few times and it's very good. Yeah, at, at points in the past, Frankwell had about 16 to 20 public houses in the 1700s and a lot of them, uh, well a few of them, I'm not saying all of them, but there was a lot of them of ill repute. sign here of the old crow there was a pub here on the corner Frankwell that's what remains now just looking out towards the crow which, which was open until 1971 and is thought to have been open since the 18th century just going down water lane here um, this was thought to a lead water lane to the original Ford that predated St George's Bridge um, so the Ford would have been here, the crossing in, over the meander of the Seven Loop into the island of Shrewsbury in the very medieval times. Yeah, and we've got some of uh, Sabrina boat there, eight in summer a lot. I'm not sure if it's going at the moment, but it's too high anyway. Not quite flooded. But if it does flood, we'll be out doing a video. You can be sure of it. Yeah, coming up from the water lane. Some seven trend works here. Yeah, I think it is. And I think we've got this builder's yard. And I do like Yeah, just been talking to the chap who rents this yard. Um with this very charming little uh, gypsy caravan. That he rents it the yard off the Wells uh, for Wellsby, a chap called Wellsby, and um, the Wellsby family have been in Frankwell for six generations. Very interesting. So we're just outside of Seven Social, which actually used to be the Silverton Hotel which was actually featured on um, uh, Four in a Bed. Four in a Bed. Yeah, Silverton Host Social. Hi Barry. How you doing? Right, mate. Outside the old Silverton and Seven Social. Um, when I first came to Shrewsbury my dad was a milkman and he actually worked from here because this used to be Shropshire Dairies and this is where all the milk floats came out of. Yeah, seven Side Social is looking very shot. I don't know if this is a, a retail carnage early um, taste of it, but yeah, that looks shot and it looks done. Yeah, this double fronted house we're looking at here is confusingly called Stephen Tudor House. I assume after one of its previous owners, it's actually a Jacobean house it was built after 1620 but of course with Frankwell since the Middle Ages at least being um, its own little borough which elected its own mayor had its own festivals and didn't Im imp imp impose its own trade tariffs the residents of Frankwell would have felt they had their own identity without a doubt yeah just passing back under the shot of Frankwell back through Stephen Tudor house check out those those beams 
Penny of Timber. And that's the Wheat Sheaf pub just across the road. Yeah, the trip to Franco wouldn't be complete without mentioning this. Uh, there was a horrific murder here about 20 years ago. Um, it was a this was a massage parlour which was also had a, a, another use and uh, someone tried to rob it and murdered the two ladies who were working here brutally. Uh, they chucked him in trail and chucked away the key, rightly so. So, so Dean, you actually um, segue in a, le a little bit. Yeah, well, I've lived in Shrewsbury all my life, and so has my family. But we originate, we went to America to live. Your family? My family. And then we came back and opened one of Shropshire's family-owned brothels. Uh, we uh -huh. found out through... Um, Ancestral.com Ancestry.com uh, And we didn't look any further because <laughs> that was bad enough really Really yeah, probably stop there <laughs> Just coming up from the Wheat Sheaf pub on this side All of this area just coming up to Frankwell Island was changed significantly in the late 60s, early 1970s Alan Davis bespoke joinery. He's been going for a long time and I've got a little story to tell about uh, Christmas Carol because he was one of the tradespeople who uh, is a carpenter joiner who, who helped make the sets for the 1984 Christmas Carol. But I'm very sad to tell you this bit of news is that I had a Christmas Carol video planned for this year because a kind viewer did mention on one of the, one of the videos the missing scene that, w that we didn't have which was the scene of young Scrooge at boarding school we now know where this is uh, thanks to the viewers information but unfortunately it's part of a chain of um, outdoor pursuits centers for children and I did contact the head office of this company and explained what I wanted to do regarding the video short video on, on it and um, they thought it was a really good idea and asked me to phone the um the manager of the one that's very local to shrewsbury where the missing scene was um she didn't, she didn't speak to me when i phoned but she asked me to email her with links to the videos which i did and explained what i wanted to do but unfortunately this was four weeks ago she's never got back to me so obviously she doesn't care about she doesn't want third rate content there and for now we won't be able to complete the Christmas Carol, which I really would have liked to have done this year. Looking up Drinkwater Street from Frankwell Island. This grade two crock framed hall house was uh, actually cut in half to make way for Drinkwater Street to be built and uh, developed. And what's interesting is you can clearly see where the original medieval structure has been added to over the years. It's, it's you know, it's almost like a, something inside a cake. St George's Church, which, which we're looking at here, was erected on land given by the Drinkwater family um, and was consecrated in 1832 and it was actually a chapel of ease connected to St Chad's Church but it did become a separate parish in 1837 it's now the church of Frankwell and Mountfields. Mountfields was developed between 1850 and 1914 and uh, was previously just the fields around the four villas that really made up Mountfields, which Charles Darwin's family's house made up one of them. Interesting fact, the uh, cross and the uh, crucifixion imagery wasn't used by uh, Christianity until the 8th century. Yeah, it's Mayfield, I mean, it's, it's like a warren, really. I do like these. Yeah, so here on Frankwell Island, there are pictures you can find online of a whole row of houses going up here because Frankwell Island wasn't built until the early 1970s uh, to help ease Shrewsbury's road congestion problems but 
all before that this was all houses and now it's not i remember where, when it were all houses around here and not trees and just on the corner of frankwell and the mount here is a uh, ye olde buck's head which can really with authority call itself that because it dates back to the 1600s there was a historical record of one Samuel Beach, uh, who was a blacksmith, and he was the actual son of a landlord of the pub. Yeah, and I just learnt this from looking at the, the pub's website. Yeah, and that is the road to Wales. And I do hope to be bringing you more videos from Wales over the winter. I've got a couple planned from Ceredigion and nearby. Let's hope it happens. Shady little sitting area there, just off, off the island. Yeah, and our Frankwell video, really coming to an end here. Yeah, just up here, Millington's, former Millington's Hospital, which is now a uh, private residential apartment. Millington's Arms House. It's private property, so we won't be going all the way up. But it's visible from quite a lot of areas of Shrewsbury up here on this hill. Our high street banks, a thing of the past. Just here, this sort of 1960s development on Frankwell. But this used to be a post office, uh, but it's not anymore, it's just shut. Majestic wine. Wow, it's got to be. The biggest wine wholesalers in the area, I'd say, other than Tanners. Yeah. Because just up this way is uh, Copthorn and Port Hill, which I imagine will be vid subjects for uh, future videos. Got every intention of covering them, but but today um, that's that's really goodbye from me. Uh, thank you for watching to the end. That's goodbye for me. Uh, don't forget to leave a like, subscribe, um, and please comment. I read them all, and I do love a good comment. So uh, that's third-rate content. Sign out. See you soon. Bye bye.